How are you, Mr. Deach? Yeah, I'm very good. I'm excited to be here as always. In fact, so excited, I actually had a shave today before I came in. You did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I feel quite honoured, actually. <laughs> I didn't, as you can probably see, but I'm pleased that you I'm did. I'm shaving for both of us. Oh, <laughs> you're shaving for two? Yeah. I'm sorry, that just sounds weird. Surely, you know, your your qualifications, mm -hmm. Demetrius, uh, mm -hmm. fall under the academic. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very much so. But to, to be honest um, with you, in, to a certain extent, I regret taking that because yeah. I would have liked to have done something which would have interested me now. Which the thing is, at the time, I probably had no in interest in, as if it was say like English literature or history or something mm -hmm. like that. I would have, I would have studied something that I was interested in. But going back to what we're saying, there's 46 graduates for every. Yeah, job. I think that was the number. Yeah. Even if they weren't graduates and they had done some other kind of study, went straight into jobs, there'd still be the same amount of people going for those jobs. They just mm. wouldn't have the, the qualifications. It wouldn't actually uh, put more jobs out there. It just means that they wouldn't be graduates. Right then, a couple of uh, calls that have come through to us, guys, on the uh, subject of jobs. Edward in South Cerny says nobody will get a job as nobody wants to work in his li <laughs> working life. He's, I, I don't think anybody really wants to work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Edward, really, I don't think anybody actually really wants to work. Are we talking uh, Dave in the shed agrees with the comment that as well as using your brain, you should use your hands too. He runs his own small electrical business and thinks that it's right. It's important for younger people to be able to use their hands in practical jobs as well as their minds. I think it's a fair message to to use your hands as well as your brain. I think that message should go out to the English cricket team. <laughs> the ashes at the moment. <laughs> Can I just, can I, sorry, can I just say, if anybody is thinking of getting into this stand-up comedy profession, uh, there are no more vacancies, all <laughs> applications have been taken, please apply next year with your CV um, in writing. I mean, this is, this is really sort of a vague and, and bizarre world that you actually live in when it comes to sort of job-wise, because there's no formal training. No, no. You, you, you don't have a qualification no. to do what you do. Yeah. Um, you get appraised every night. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, other people don't get, you know, don't have to sit down in front of no their manager every no five pinches. seconds <clears throat> and be told what they think of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's the thing. And it's the time it takes, because as soon as you, you can't, as you say, you can't train on stand-up, you've just got to start, you just got to get mucky right away. And you're mm. constantly learning. You speak to anybody in the is business. There any, is there any other job where you just start having to do it immediately and there's no training involved? A suicide bomber? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that's not so much a career, though, is it? You know, it's... it's I mean, short term. I know, yeah, you, th you, you throw yourself into that one. Mm. Um, but is, th I mean, seriously, is, is there any other yeah, job where... MPs aren't trained for it. Not as an MP. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, MPs uh, aren't trained for it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I suppose th they having would start baby? working in the... Um, Doctors? No, having a no, baby? No, they, they having a trained. baby and not trained for it. <laughs> 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 Doctors aren't trained? <laughs> what's, what's your local practice? Right. So, look, it's my first day on the job. Right. You say you've got a leg complaint. I've yeah. got this thing. I put it in my ears. What do I do with this <laughs> cold bit? <laughs> I was just throwing that idea out there, you know, may, maybe a possibility. Actually, yeah, yeah, obviously doctors are trained. Um, carry on with, the, with, with um, because, because the whole idea of being a stand-up comedian is, is the most bizarre choice that anybody could make, I think. I remember when uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Carr was on the Jonathan Ross show and uh, Jonathan Ross said, oh, you know, you, you did very well, you were an overnight success. And Jimmy Carr said, yeah, it, it took me nine years to get where I am today. And the audience laughed because they thought that was a joke, you were an overnight success and yeah, the period yeah. of time he gave was a lot longer than you'd expect. That, that's the actual truth. In, in comedic terms, if you've become a, mm. let's say, a TV success, which is where, you know, people would sort of gear you towards being a success, and you've done that within, within 10 years, that would be an o overnight success. Because you have to spend years and years and years mastering your craft and doing doing show, you know doing the shows and going to edinburgh and and doing your edinburgh previews which i'm doing in two weeks time at the rosa's theater and also the gloucester guild hall <laughs> ding ding <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that to sort of to to master your craft and then you know and, and you sort of try the jokes and they don't work and so yeah it does take a long 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 time to do it do you wish you'd started earlier um in hindsight yes but in hindsight no because could you have started earlier I mean, just could the person that you used to be, could, could that person have gone up onto, onto a stage and told jokes? Yeah, I could, I could have done that, but I, I, I think it would have been better for me to have done that, yeah. I think, mm. I think for the main reason is the timing would have been better, because if I'd started in 
the 90s it was and speaking to people who have sort of been through that process in the 90s it was a lot easier to sort of project, project yourself then because there were a lot less a lot fewer comedians coming through mm. at that point in time but i think experience does count does count for mm. a lot mm. if you look up sort of people like um you know michael mcintyre and frank skinner they started sort of later on and you know mm. they've got the experience to uh sort of mm. they, well, they look at it from a different perspective i guess so you're looking forward to uh, the wonderful world of edinburgh yeah with Andrew, yeah um <laughs> it is it, it it's a weird there's so many other shows up there that um, i'm just worried about getting getting the audience in i've, I've thought about press gang in it and sort of putting it into a hostage situation <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was i was thinking of I'm sort sorry, of i'm sorry nothing good starts with the phrase hostage situation if it gets an audience i'll i'll take it i was thinking actually Ray, of, of using a pr consultancy and i thought no I'll, I'll actually just use some somali pirates they could probably get the people in <laughs> yeah exactly and 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 you probably don't have to pay them as much to be honest i've, I've just had to taste my <laughs> about other jobs that you just have to go ahead and there's no training for. Uh, Paul and Mike the Wallers say how about being a porn star?